Yes, that's right. Steam OS 3.6.19 is out. Stable. While the Steam Deck updates of today aren't as earth-shattering as the Steam Deck updates of the past, the truth is that the Steam Deck still gets plenty of welcome fixes. So let's go over them. But before that, if you like this video or any other video I've made, please like, subscribe, and share with all of your friends. Spreading the good gospel of high-tech lowlife really lets the YouTube algorithm know that I'm doing well, and that you want more, more, more high-tech lowlife. A vast majority of this changelog is attributed to bug fixes. Essentially meaning if you've never experienced these bugs, then they really don't affect you. But even then, there are still some very important changes. For example, the updated Linux kernel and updated Arch Linux base. While updating the Linux kernel can sometimes improve performance, at the end of the day, you're still dealing with the same hardware, so it's not like earth-shattering performance differences. The main reason you'd want to update the Linux kernel is for stability and security as well. One might not think security is super important for a Steam Deck, but it is important to remember. Some people really do use their Steam Decks as their primary computer, so if anything were to happen or if their systems were to be compromised, well, that would be an issue, right? There are a number of different fixes for a number of niche issues, but there is one I want to talk about. This particular memory leak issue that's been happening on Steam Deck OLED units on 3.5. I've seen some discourse around it, some say it's user error, or some say it's the game itself that's causing this memory leak. It's an interesting conundrum, because you never know if it's the game itself, or maybe if it's the Steam Deck itself. Well, at the very least, there was one issue with the Steam Deck OLED itself, and now that's been resolved. That said, some games that do have known memory leaks will still have those memory leaks, but that's now no longer the fault of the Steam Deck, but rather the game itself. I also want to talk about this graphics and performance section. Mesa 24.1. This is the one where ray tracing performance has gone up substantially, but to be honest, I still wouldn't want to run ray tracing on my Steam Deck. But there are still performance increases as well, generally speaking, across the board. It's also supposed to increase performance and stability when your memory is getting full. Your RAM, I mean. And this one's big news for Steam Deck OLED users. People that have Steam Deck OLEDs that aren't using the limited edition OLEDs are suffering from what's known as the Mura effect. Essentially, it makes the image look a little grainy. For whatever reason, the panels that Valve used for the Steam Deck OLED limited editions don't suffer from this. They come from a different company, BOE. Essentially, this is supposed to apply some sort of Mura compensation. My limited edition OLED doesn't suffer from this, so I can't exactly test it. So that's my bad, I guess. While you've always been able to pair your AirPods with your Steam Deck, Valve has improved the experience of pairing them. And you know that feature where Bluetooth controllers can wake up the Steam Deck OLED from sleep? Valve is also letting you set other Bluetooth devices to also wake the Steam Deck OLED up if so desired. And now for the interesting part. Added support for extra ROG Ally keys. It's important to recognize that this is an OS update, not a Steam client update. So I don't necessarily think this means anything in particular. Valve also added support for the Raikiri Pro and the Machinike G5 controller. I've never seen the Machinike G5 Pro, but it seems kind of okay. Maybe I'll check it out at some point. Valve also added motion sensors to the built-in non-Steam kernel driver, which in theory means that the motion sensor should be exposed to programs outside of Steam. So something like RPCS3 should be able to grab the Steam Deck's gyro and map it to the 6-axis controls. I'm not super concerned with the updated KDE Plasma, but I will say there is a massive changelog over on their website if you want to read that. There isn't too much in here that's super important, but this is news for Steam Deck owners that are running Windows on their Steam Deck OLEDs. Bluetooth drivers now work on Steam Deck OLED. Valve also mentions adding overclocking controls to the Steam Deck LCD and also improving battery life by up to 10% in light load situations. Now what exactly does light load situations mean? Could it be like idling the Steam menu, because that counts as a light load. Or perhaps playing a light indie game like Celeste. I would battery test this, but I might need to replace the Steam Deck's battery. It's pretty old at this point. Now for some more interesting stuff, the Steam Deck dock. If you plug your Steam Deck into the Steam Deck dock, and there's an update available, you can actually update the dock using your Steam Deck. As far as I'm aware, no other dock can be updated this way. They've also added support for some HDMI CEC features. For those not in the know, HDMI CEC is what allows your devices to control your TV. Like say for example, your Steam Deck can wake your TV up. 
but it can also control, say, your TV's controls. And in theory, if you wake the Steam Deck up, it should be able to change the channel to whatever the Steam Deck is using, like HDMI 3 or 4 or whatever. As for development and modding, this doesn't really mean anything to you, the end user. This is more for people that are developing the mods for end users like you to use. So pay no mind to these. So now it's time to talk about another development. Valve has confirmed that they are in fact working on the Steam Deck too. That's not exactly news. What's also not news is that Valve confirmed that they're waiting for a generational upgrade. The reason why this is relevant to this update story is that the updates are less about brand new features and more about fixing bugs, some of these bugs being long-standing bugs. Now this is pure speculation, so don't take this as word, but part of me believes that this is them shifting away from the current versions of SteamOS and instead shifting towards optimizing for a Steam Deck 2 or whatever the next revision's called. Fixing all of these bugs related to SteamOS and the Steam Deck itself is still good, and the fact that the Steam Deck is still getting driver updates is great because driver updates can improve performance, that's just a known fact. But these updates have become 90% bug fixes. It has me wondering, with the existing hardware still remaining as it is, what other features could Valve add to the Steam Deck and the Steam Deck OLED? What more could Valve add to the hardware that exists today? Part of me believes that not much more can be added, and that we probably won't be seeing any brand new SteamOS features. At least, not until the Steam Deck 2 comes out. There is so much speculation on what the Steam Deck 2 could be, what the Steam Deck 2 will have, if it'll run an AMD APU or if it'll run an ARM APU. The possibilities are endless for a Steam Deck 2 with brand new features. So my final thoughts are bug fixes are good, great, superb, excellent, but I wouldn't expect to see any more major features. But if you want more features for your Steam Deck, I would recommend looking into Decky. Decky is a plugin framework where community members make their own plugins that extend functionality of the Steam Deck. Decky is actually super cool, and it deserves its own video, which I've made before. If you check out the Steam Deck Masterclass Volume 5, it tells you all about how to install Decky and also what plugins you should use. So you should check it out. There will be a link in the description down below. If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos. And if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high tech low life with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high tech low life, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description.